as I was preparing this uh, this uh, little eulogy, I was reminded of the, the woman whose husband died, and uh, she went to put a notice in the newspaper. And so the editor said, what would you like to say? And she said, well, just put in Joe died. And so the editor says, well, you, get, uh, you can have five words for the same price as two words. Would you like to add another three words? So she said, yes, you can add car for sale. <laughs> Something about that, anyway. I'll stand on this side. I thought I'd just show you this picture for one reason that uh, I'm still in it, the other two are dead. So uh, there's maybe something to be right into that. But on the left, we have Ernest Poser, and his uh, memorial service will be held next week at the uh, Cecil Green Park at UBC. So if any of you remember uh, Ernest, you could maybe uh, attend there. Then in the middle we have Guy Richards. I'm going to talk a little bit about him in just a moment. And then uh, myself on the, on the other side. A guy, um, interesting fellow, he, uh, he trained at Bartholomew's Hospital in London. He graduated in 1942 and was immediately drafted into the army. However, although he was uh, English, he was assigned to a Canadian unit, and uh, he landed on the Normandy beaches on D-Day, on the 6th of June, 1944. Within 12 hours, he was wounded and was back in the UK to recuperate. So that was his uh, military experience, of 12 hours on the beach. After the war, and because of his dealings with the Canadian soldiers, he emigrated from the UK to Saskatchewan, where he joined the faculty of the university to teach bacteriology and sociobiology. Uh, sociobiology, for those who might not know, has to do with uh, the evolution of behavior, to put it into one sentence. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a medical doctor whom he had met while recuperating, and she opened the first clinic in Canada to deal exclusively with women's health. Now, um, I don't know if any of you here have got uh, medical insurance, uh, particularly the government medical insurance. But if you have, you can thank Guy Richards for that because uh, he became involved in a very heated dialogue in Saskatchewan in 1962 over the issue of doctors privately billing for services rendered. He proposed a government-run insurance system much to the strong objections of the most doctors at that time. And in fact, there was a strike, a major strike of doctors in Saskatchewan in 1962. However, Guy and his friends prevailed, and they got Tommy Douglas of the CCF party, which was later the NDP, to bring about provincial Medicare, and then later the federal government, uh, the Liberals under Lester Pearson, later extended the system to cover the entire country. Looking at the wrong slide there. Now, after he retired, he moved to Falls Creek in Vancouver in the mid-1980s and uh, became involved with BCHA at that time. The, the, um, the Richards remained as members for most of the rest of their lives. Guy gave two presentations to our group on aspects of social biology. He also served on the board of directors and he was the president of BCHA for the 1989-90 period. Among many other interests, the Richards were instrumental in the others, with others in establishing the Mid-Main Walk-In Clinic around Main and 25th in Vancouver. And uh, I believe it's still in operation. I haven't been there for a while, but it was about 10 or 12 years ago he established that. Now, in private life, the Richards were a charming couple, highly sociable, hospitable, well-informed and tolerant, although some of their culinary skills could have used some improvement. It was British cooking at best. They had the Yorkshire puddings and toad in the hole, fried egg pies, I mean, just think of it. And both of these were medical doctors, by the way. you think they would have known better. <laughs> With all respects to you, Brian, the, another British doctor who probably knows better. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they had some ex eccentricities. One afternoon I went to visit with them. They asked me if I'd like something to eat. Well, I expected to be offered a cookie or a piece of cake. But oh no, 
Guy bowled up two eggs, and uh, well, which we then peeled and munched as we chatted about things. And I'm, I remember still trying to hold that boiling hot egg in my hand and paying attention to what he was saying. Another time, I noticed he had laid out a very extensive electric train set all around the living room uh, on the floor. So I asked him if it was for his grandchildren. Oh no, he replied, it's for me. My own father gave me this set before the war, and I brought it to Canada and had the power converter to run on 120 volts supply. And in his, uh, his address in Leggenboot Square, he lived down in Falls Creek in Leggenboot Square, the address was 666, <laughs> which I think is rather chic for a humanist <laughs> to have the mark of the beast right on his uh, mailbox. <laughs> And finally, one other of Guy's eccentricities is worthy of note. His skills as a driver were marginal, to say the least. It wasn't that he was careful, but he would become so engrossed in conversation that he had more than a few near misses. He, uh, he once offered to drive me home from a meeting across town in his he had a little mini. He also had a Jaguar. Never saw the Jaguar, but I saw the mini a couple of times. This was a dark and wet, windy evening. It was the closest thing I ever had to a religious experience. <laughs> anyway, to conclude, we remember the Richards fondly for their contribution to society, their involvement in humanism, and their positive roles as good citizens.